I'm going to show you how you can use the background clip CSS property to get really creative with your web pages. The background clip is a property that specifies how far the background of an element should extend within the element's padding box. It allows you to control the visibility of the background color or image that is set using the background property. You can really create some amazing things using this property. So let's take a look and see how this works. Here's our starting HTML file. All I have on this page is a H1. I have a section with a class of demo one. It contains three divs that contain paragraphs with some text in them. And here is the result so far. In regard to the CSS, I have a universal selector, a rule on my HTML, another universal selector that's also targeting pseudo classes, and then I have rules on my body, my H1. I'm using Flexbox on my section so that I can align the divs so that they appear horizontally. And then on the divs themselves, I have some padding, I'm using text align center, and I have a border. It is worth mentioning that the border that I'm currently using is using a 50% alpha. So even though this appears blue right here, it really is partially transparent. What we're going to do to begin with is we're going to add a background image to the divs. The image that I'm using happens to be a partially transparent PNG. Now, if we refresh, you're not going to really see any sort of change. And that's because my image is white with areas that are transparent. In order for us to see the image, we're going to need to add a background color. So I'll go ahead and specify a background color and we'll just make this a shade of yellow. Now when I save and refresh, you're going to see the background image showing through behind the boxes. Because of the box property, the background image will not only affect the background of the boxes, but it's also going to bleed into the stroked area. So you will not only see it as a background of our box elements, but you'll also see it slightly inside of the border. The reason that we can partially see the image in the border is because I've reduced the opacity down to 50%. If the border was 100% opaque, then we wouldn't see the background image. In addition to this, I'm going to set my background size to cover. This is simply going to shrink the image down and allow it to tile throughout the boxes. So the actual pattern is going to appear to be a little bit smaller. Now that we have this in place, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the background clip properties. We'll start off by targeting our first div. I'm going to select the various divs by using nth child. For the first div, we're going to go ahead and set the background clip property to border box. Border box is actually the default value. This allows the background to extend all the way to the outside edge of the element's border, which is the default behavior. So if we refresh our page, nothing is going to change. What we'll do is we'll target the second box. This time, instead of using a border box, I'm going to change this to padding box. The padding box value clips the background at the outside edge of the element's padding and does not let it extend all the way to the border. When the background clip is changed to padding box, the background color stops where the element's padding ends. So notice that the background border is blue, and that's because the background isn't allowed to bleed into the border like it's doing when we're using the default value of border box. The final value that we're going to look at is content box. The content box property is going to clip the background at the edge of the content box. With content box set, the background color will only apply itself to the div's content. In this case, it's the single paragraph element. Any padding that we have on the div and the border are not going to be affected by this background color or image. There is one little detail worth mentioning, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to target the last element's paragraph, and we'll go ahead and set the margin to 10 pixels. If we refresh, you can see that even though margin is generally on the outside of an element, the margin is still going to affect how the color and the image are going to be applied. 
the color will extend into the contents margin when we're using this particular technique. So do keep that in mind. However, knowing how background clip works can really help when you're dealing with background images and how you want it to fill the box of the particular elements. Now that we know the basics about background clip, let's go ahead and let's create something else on our page so that I can show you some other ways in which we can use the background clip property. I'm going to go ahead and create a header element and I'll go ahead and add an H1 inside of it. We'll go into our CSS and let's go ahead and create some CSS so that we can control this particular heading. Right now, the heading is inheriting the default heading styles that we've created, but I'm going to overwrite some of these. I'm going to use HSL for the color and I'll set the color to be a shade of blue. I'm going to go ahead and use a font size and we'll use the clamp value so that we can ensure that our text is going to be responsive. I'll set my line height to one and my font weight to 900. I'm also going to use text transform of uppercase. In addition to styling the H1, I'm going to also add some rules to the header itself. And this is just going to create some visual separation from this element and the other elements that I'm going to be working with on the page. Now that I have this set, if we refresh, you'll see that this H1 has now been placed inside of this particular element. And I just realized I used the class of demo one, it should be demo two. And let's actually just have the border appear on the top. So we'll make those changes and we'll refresh. And now we can see all our new styles are being applied to this particular H1. Now that we have this in place, we're going to go back to the H1 and we'll add a background image. If we save now and we refresh, you're gonna see that the background image is going to appear as a background of the H1, which is exactly what we would expect it to do. In addition to setting this background image, I'm going to use a background size of cover, which will just scale the image down so that we can see the entire image. You'll see that we now get more greens and oranges on the right-hand side of the image. Now for the magic. We want to go ahead and fill this image only where our text is. We can easily accomplish this by using our background clip property. Instead of using the previous values that we looked at in the other examples, we're going to use a background clip with a value of text. This CSS property allows us to apply a background image or a color to only the text content of an element rather than the entire element itself. This is achieved by actually using the text as a mask for the background image or color. Now, if you go ahead and save your page and you refresh, you're gonna notice that there is no change. The reason why is that currently, this particular property does not work on all the browsers. Chrome is one of the browsers that requires that we add the vendor prefix of WebKit dash background clip. If we do this now and we refresh, you're going to see that the image disappears, but we don't see the image within our text. The reason that we don't see the image is because the text color is obscuring the image. So what we also need to do is we need to specify that the color is set to transparent. Even if I didn't have this color of blue, the default color of black would overwrite this particular technique. So you'll always need to use a background color of transparent. When I refresh now though, you're going to see that my text is filled with our background image. The background is actually clipped to the foreground text content of the element, and it's not visible outside of the text. The rest of the element, such as padding or border, is still gonna be visible, but the background is only going to appear behind the text. I love this technique because it's really easy to do, and it's totally customizable. The text is still live text, you can select it, we could change what the text says, we can resize our screen, and the text may change size because of our clamp method. It really creates a very flexible way in which you could fill text super easily with images. This is so great, and it's such an amazing way that we can be creative when designing our web pages. I really love this technique, and I think that it's fabulous that we're able to do this 
without having to create images because it just frees us from the constraints of using image-based content in lieu of creating live text and then making the text look the way we want. I'm going to show you one other amazing thing we can do with background clip. Let's go into our HTML and we're going to create one more header element. This one's going to have a class of demo three and I'll change the text just a little bit. Now that I have the text in place, I'm going to go back to my CSS. What we're going to do now is we're going to use background clip, but we're actually going to animate a gradient that's going to appear within the text. This is really cool and it only requires a handful of CSS code in order to accomplish it. I'll go ahead and select the H1 within demo three and let's go ahead and just set some general font rules. In regards to the background, I'm going to be using a linear gradient. We'll go ahead and we'll create some custom properties to use for this linear gradient because it will make it easier for us to make changes if we want later on. I'll define a custom property of C1 and let's set the value to an HSL value. I'm going to use blue for my first color and then I'll repeat that process and create another custom property. This one we'll call CS2. Now inside of our linear gradient, we can go ahead and we can specify the colors that we want to use. I'm going to have my gradient go from the first color into the second color and then back to the first color again. If we take a look and we refresh, you're going to see that here is our text. Now currently we don't see our background gradient and the reason why is because I've placed my semicolon in the wrong place. That should actually be after the closing parentheses for the linear gradient. Let's save and refresh. Now you can clearly see the gradient and it's transitioning from the blue into the gold and back to blue again. Now, because I want to animate this gradient so that it vertically moves across the text, I'm going to rotate my gradient. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll add a 90 degree rotation to this particular element. So I'll just pass in 90 degrees. And if we save now, if you watch the gradient, it's going to switch to a vertical configuration. The final thing that I'm going to add is I'm going to control the size and position of the linear gradient. We can do this by using a shorthand method. So what I'll do is after the closing parentheses for the linear gradient, we'll add zero, space zero, forward slash, and I think we should use a variable for the background size as well. So let me just create one more variable. I'm just gonna call this one BG size, and we'll set this to 300%. Now that I have that variable in place, I'm going to pass in my new variable that I just created, and then we'll put 100%. What this line of code is doing is it's going to define the size and position of the linear gradient. The zero zero specifies the position of the gradient. In this case, it means that the gradient is going to start at the upper left hand corner of the element. The forward slash separator divides the position and the size of the gradient. So this is how we can use shorthand. Our variable of BG size, which is currently 300%, is going to specify the size of the gradient. The first size that we pass in is setting the width of the gradient. So we are now scaling the width of the gradient out by 300%. The final value is setting the height of the gradient, which we're just leaving at its natural value of 100%. If we save and we refresh, keep your eye on the gradient, and you're going to see that the gold part of the gradient appears to disappear. The reason that we don't see it anymore is we've actually stretched the gradient out and made it three times as large as it was previously. So that gold part is in the middle and that exists farther to the right that we're not seeing. It's off the screen somewhere. Now that we have this in place, we can go ahead and we can create some CSS animation and we can animate that position property. Let's go ahead and let's define keyframes. I'll go ahead and give this a name of move BG. I'll simply pass in two, and then I'm just going to pass in the background position. We're gonna set the value to our background size variable, and then the second value is going to be zero. This is going to translate our background position X by our custom property. What we're doing here is we're defining a keyframe for the animation. So this is going to use our BG size custom property that we defined earlier, and it will allow us to alter the position of the gradient. 
Now that we have this in place, if we go ahead and call the animation, so we'll specify that we want to use move BG. I want the animation to take five seconds and I want it to just go ahead and repeat infinitely. And finally, I'm going to pass in linear. I don't want to add any sort of easing. I just want this to play at a constant rate. If we refresh now, you'll notice that the gradient should be moving. And the reason mine isn't working is because I capitalized the G, but then I didn't call the animation with a capital G. So let's just change that. We'll refresh. And now you can see that the gradient is actually moving behind the text. So now the animation is working. And the last step is to simply clip the gradient so that it only shows in the text. I'll use the same code that we used earlier on our first example of clipping text, and we'll pass that in to our demo 3H1. I'll save, and now when I refresh, you will see that the gradient is actually moving within the text. How awesome is this? And all we did was use a little bit of code to be able to generate this. It simply blows my mind that these days CSS is so powerful that we can create all sorts of really compelling and interesting types of effects on our web pages with just a little bit of code. I hope you love these techniques as much as I do and that you'll be able to start using them in your pages right away.